So my name is uh, uh, Joe Werner. I'm the product manager for, for SUSE Manager. And I'm going to first talk a bit about how SUSE Manager fits into our overall portfolio. This is actually a, a slide that's graphically a bit outdated, but it's still true. So you've heard a few new product announcements that are not showing up there yet. If you're interested in that bigger picture, there's another session on Friday from Git to Cloud, where my uh, um, director, um, Pete Chadwick, talks about our vision um, for the future. That's where you'll hear about how products like Container as a Service Platform and so on uh, fit into the picture. But as of today, we have uh, those components in the portfolio, starting from SUSE Studio for building images, for building workloads, SUSE Manager for all the management. Hi, Kim. Um, then, of course, uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server in the data center or for the public cloud and our own um, private cloud solution, uh, SUSE Linux OpenStack Cloud. Uh, SUSE OpenStack Cloud. <laughs> There's no Linux in it. Uh, and, uh, well, there is Linux in it, but not in the name. Uh, and SUSE Enterprise Storage um, as the software defined storage solution. Now, in this session, I want to combine two things. I want to talk about common use cases where you would take SUSE Manager and integrate it with other solutions. Um, those are mainly use uh, the so-called SUSE Manager Magic Wheel that you'll see in a minute to go through those. And then we'll look into options that you have for that kind of integration. So that's a bit more of the technical part. And finally, we'll also have a few slides on the um, management pack for um, a system center operations manager from Microsoft. Unfortunately, the guy who could do the live demo has a session in parallel, so I can't do the live demo today, but you can always ask uh, your sales reps um, for one because it's all cloud-based. We can basically deliver it worldwide. Yeah, um, just on a very high level, the typical use cases where you would want to interface uh, a tool like SUSE Manager with um, the rest of your IT infrastructure. First of all, if you want to automate uh, repetitive tasks, so you want to script things either using SUSE Manager to trigger other tools or, um, yeah, in many cases, um, we have situations where SUSE Manager is basically used as a patch management engine. So we have customers who are invested into BMC Blade Logic or HP Server Automation. They would use those proprietary tools just because it's a corporate standard, so they will use them for everything, Linux, Unix, Windows. Uh, but because SUSE Manager is much better at actually patching a Linux machine, they would basically write a little trigger script and use that from that commercial automation tool to actually trigger the patches uh, to be delivered by SUSE Manager. Um, sometimes I'm calling that inversion of control pattern because the idea would usually be that SUSE Manager is basically managing your data center, but in those cases, the other tool would inject scripts onto the box and then the box basically manages itself by calling back. Yeah, I mean, that's not always the most secure pattern, but it's uh, workable if you are in a situation where um, the topology doesn't allow for anything else. Um, then just reporting, all kinds of reporting. So the manager has a database that keeps track of all the systems um, that you have registered, all the patches that are on some hardware details and so on. And of course, um, you can use um, that to generate all kinds of reports. And there's a built-in reporting system that we'll uh, also cover in a minute, but there's also an API that you can use for that. Yeah, just basically hooking systems together uh, that weren't originally built uh, to work together. Um, there's a case study available, um, a success story from Apollo Optic, a, a large optical retailer in Europe um, that's headquartered almost next door um, to us in Nuremberg in, in Schwabach, my birth town. <laughs> um, Apollo Optic has actually um, combined SUSE Manager with a, a Microsoft Dynamics ERP system. Um, so when they provision their service for a new store. What um, the guys in, in, the, in the provisioning center basically do, they take the bare metal hardware, they scan the hardware, 
to get the hardware data into the system and then they enter uh, something like a four digit branch office number um, that would then automatically query the ERP, get all the data about that particular um, branch office out of the ERP system and use it to configure a machine, even two stage. So it's, it's a base image and then on top of that they have like two or three virtual machines provisioned and then the machine ships to the store. Uh, yeah, and then of course general orchestration between separate systems. When, when it comes to orchestration, we have something new to talk about. You've heard about SALT. I'm pretty sure that you haven't missed it uh, uh, during the first keynote on, on Tuesday and, and later. Um, yeah, sometimes people want to write their own UI. And again, in that Apollo Optic case, they have just this little web UI where the admin enters that four-digit uh, code and they have the, uh, the barcode scanner connected to that app, which is basically just a keyboard that said uh, from the barcode data would pro just create a string that, that that's also fit into the web front end. Um, or others would do reporting front ends, where they just um, visualize things and build their own portals. Or they use um, tools like Splunk or so um, to do the, um, the dashboard. Yeah, dashboards. Um, even mobile devices, uh, a while ago, I think it was like four years ago, we, we built a, an Android app for SUSE Manager. Um, that app was a really cool demonstrator, but commercially, I mean, we didn't charge for it. It was really, the beta was really available for any SUSE Manager users. Um, so there wasn't really a huge uptake, but we, we see the potential of that kind of technology. So if you want, you could think of scenarios where you Basically, when you are in front of your rack in the data center, you could, um, for example, you could scan the machine, the barcode or the IP address or, or, or text that you, you have and then directly get on a, on a tablet or so get access to uh, the data in SUSE Manager. So those scenarios are possible by just using the API, um, just to give you a few ideas. So yeah, that's when you need APIs. Um, when I presented a similar presentation last year in Amsterdam, uh, I found that sign uh, at, a, at a restaurant um, in, in the city center and I liked, liked it because they were so honest. <laughs> uh, lousy food and warm beer. Uh, so just to set expectations right, uh, if you are looking for an in-depth training on how those APIs are used, uh, that's definitely not the wrong the right course, that's why it's not call, called hands-on training, it's really just to give you an idea, to help you navigate through the options you have, uh, and then of course you would have to follow up in more detail with in-depth documentation, or uh, when it comes to the SALT stuff, we are really offering quite a few um, in-depth sessions. Um, I have another one on Thursday on extending SALT, for example, which is a two-day, a uh, two-day, no, <laughs> a two-hour hands-on session. Yeah. So the objectives are really basically demonstrating the power of these APIs and, and, and have, have, helping you navigate around them. Yeah, that finally brings us to our SUSE Manager Magic Wheel, um, which we are using to um, demonstrate um, what SUSE Manager can do for you in general. Um, as part of the latest rebranding efforts, the colors have gotten more and more fancy, uh, those are basically, uh, to some extent, they are copy and paste problems between office suites, but I've, when, when you come to the latest slides, I've, I've toned it down a bit so we can see more. Um, in general, SUSE Manager could be thought of as a hub um, where you can collect data and also um, provide data to other systems. And those are just a few options. Originally, that was meant to be part of a roadmap discussion uh, where we want to go with SUSE Manager. And then later we found out that basically we already can do most of that with the APIs that we have today. So it may not be an, uh, an out of the box experience for all of those, but um, we already have all those possibilities. So we can feed data about systems, uh, about users uh, from LDAP directories, from Active Directory. Um, one of the LDAP directories that we are using ourselves is we have the Sleepers, the SUSE Linux Enterprise Point of Service product um, that is LDAP based. Uh, and 
for next year we are planning integration of um, SUSE Linux Enterprise point of service into SUSE Manager for retail use cases. That's when we would use that capability of, of uh, importing uh, LDAP data through the API. Configuration uh, management database is one uh, example that's actively in use by, by uh, partners and customers is ServiceNow integration. ServiceNow is, is pretty big in, in, in large banks, uh, insurances and so on. As a CMDB, but they, they actually calling themselves the ERP for IT. So it's more than, than just a CMDB, it's basically managing all your um, IT processes. Uh, interestingly enough, in the cloud, so if the cloud is down, I don't know how they would open the ticket to fix the problem, but um, that's how enterprises trust uh, the cloud these days. It's, it's fascinating. Um, yeah, and there are all kinds of different aspects to that, systems, inventory, configuration data, uh, uh, but the most interesting one, I think, is topology. Uh, what I mean by topology is really understanding how your stuff works together. And that those could be uh, geographical topologies, like where are my data centers, uh, or where are the boxes in the data center, but also logical ones and network maps, basically, which don't always have to overlap. So if you have some of your machines running in a public cloud, uh, of course, there's some virtual uh, network tunneling, but uh, if you look at the physical network layer, it's pretty complicated and, and it can stretch a wide area network, uh, some dark fiber that you own or whatever. Um, that lower left box virtualization, public and private cloud, um, that's where you have other systems that you could um, access through APIs and, and that Again, uh, multiple aspects to, to that. First of all, what we are actively using in SUSE Manager, we are using the VMware API to collect data about virtual machines running as part of our subscription matching. So to find out how many SUSE Linux Enterprise instances are running in your VMware cluster, we can ask the API directly so you don't have to uh, provide that data manually. Um, another aspect, of, obviously, is to provision systems that like you can provision systems directly into VMware or use the OpenStack API for private cloud or AWS uh, APIs um, to um, upload AMIs to, to, to start that, those AMIs and so on. Uh, then there's monitoring, pretty obviously. Uh, as of last year, um, Izinga as a Nagios-based Nag uh, monitoring solution is part of uh, the package if you buy as a manager um, subscriptions, you also get support um, for uh, an unlimited number of Izinga management uh, servers, uh, monitoring servers. Yeah, and there are again multiple aspects to it. If you have monitoring servers, first of all, you may want to export and import your system so that the monitoring system knows about your systems, but then also configuring the clients to use the right probes. Um, let's say you have a web server, we, you want to have another, uh, a different set of probes applied than if it's a, a database server. Um, that's still work in progress with the APIs and with the SALT integration that I'm going to talk about later. We can do a lot of things in that direction, but we are really planning to make this a more uh, out-of-the-box experience. Yeah, you can basically, when you apply the configuration for, let's say, a database server, can also make sure that it will end up in the monitoring dashboard and it, it will have the right probes configured and so on. Yeah, finally, already when we talking when we are talking about configuration management, of course, there is the built-in configuration management in SUSE Manager, but there are also other systems like Puppet and Chef. Uh, and it's possible without any major uh, quirks that you hook up an existing infrastructure that you have. A lot of companies have their Puppet infrastructure, for example, um, with SUSE Manager. Um, and for example, you could use SUSE Manager as the external node qualifier. Um, our salt-based solution also allows you to basically take the task of automating when you actually 
run and apply your puppet, uh, uh, your puppet uh, manifest and so on. And then finally, uh, build service, build systems. That's something we are also actively working on. Uh, SUSE manager going forward a year or two from now, the idea is that it, SUSE manager is really going to be um, the one content hub where all the content content meaning RPM packages, other source code that's compiled um, that you use for building your workloads is managed and maintained and, and we can make sure that we can scan all the machines that are up and running and see, okay, do you need patches? Do the images need to be rebuilt uh, and, and, and replaced? So how does that sit with SMP? Do replace SMP? Yeah, I'm, I'm always re repeating the questions for the recording. Um, uh, the question was about SMT. Yeah, SUSE Manager is a superset of what SMT can do. So you can use SMT on top of SUSE Manager if you want to use it just as a proxy to um, shield SUSE Manager from the network. But um, in terms of what it does, yeah, um, it has the same basic functionality, but what it offers on top of that is that SUSE Manager allows you to um, stage your patches. You can um, be very um, fine-grained about which patches go where. You can define groups. You can, uh, um, then of course on top of that you have the configuration management and the asset management, all those things that uh, SMT doesn't have. Yeah, but it also um, uh, would just replace SMT in terms of downloading patches from the internet uh, and having a local uh, proxy if you want. Yeah, so back to the magic wheel. Now basically the exercise is going around the wheel and looking at uh, the options that you have. We are starting with that lower right corner. That's where I actually have one simple recommendation. That's where you use SUSE Manager. You don't use another tool. Because uh, even in a world where you have all those other commercial um, tools in production, be it a TVLE, HP server automation, and uh, uh, BMC Blade Log Logic, and so on, uh, when it comes to Linux package management uh, and patch management, SUSE Manager just does the job best. Yeah? Which doesn't mean that you can't do it the other way around. You can, of course, as, I, as I've mentioned, use those other tools, use the SUSE Manager APIs. Um, to actually um, trigger patches. Another story uh, would be provisioning. Uh, provisioning is an area where, of course, there's a lot of potential for integration. Um, SUSE Manager has a um, Pixie Boot environment, so you can use PXE or Pixie Boot um, to install servers from scratch using AutoYAS profiles or Kickstart files uh, uh, when, when we are talking Red Hat. But of course, uh, there are other options. If you're in a VMware world, usually provisioning will probably happen with, with templates in VMware. Um, although, of course, you can run VMware in a Pixie style as well. You could do that uh, quite as well. In public clouds, there are provisioning um, APIs. So basically, the idea is you, you upload some kind of images like AMIs and AWS, and, and then you can provision them from, from there. Other Pixie Boot stacks, like uh, our own SUSE Linux Enterprise Point of Service Sleepo stack, and then there are um, hardware side APIs like HPE's OneView. There's a nice demo uh, video that they have at the HPE booth uh, where they show integration uh, through um, Salt Stack uh, into SUSE Manager, uh, Lenovo X Clarity, and, and similar things. So the, the C is actually meant to be uppercase, but that was autocorrection, I guess. Yeah, when it comes to asset management, that's really where we are talking import and export of, of data, and, and there are uh, quite a few interesting topologies. So one large uh, uh, reinsurance company in, in Europe uh, is using ServiceNow for their CMDB. But when it comes to Unix and Linux, there are a few attributes that, that ServiceNow just doesn't provide them. So they have another uh, database on top. And that database can be a SUSE manager server, for example, where you basically make sure that you, from time to time or in real time, 
uh, mirror of the data that ServiceNow needs uh, on a global level in the corporation up to ServiceNow. Another example that's more of, out of the open source, um, I don't know if you know that to rec tables is a pretty simple uh, tool that's just geared towards one goal, showing you tables of your racks and then you can add the machines and there's some uh, import-export capability that can automate those things. Uh, those scenarios, uh, Susan Manager has a pretty similar database structure, so we could basically track the same data like rack numbers, rooms, and so on. Um, and there are plans in the long run um, to integrate uh, functionality pretty similar to, to what rack tables can do directly into SUSE Manager. Yeah, configuration management, and that's really where we're going to spend a bit more time on later. Um, basically, the, the other options you have, like Puppet and Chef, we, we, can, we can integrate uh, with those. Um, that's really mostly interesting if, if you or your customers are worried about um, their existing investments. Uh, you can really rest assured that, that Susan Manager doesn't impose uh, a specific technology here. We provide a full set of options, but uh, uh, if you have Puppet running or Chef running or even Ansible, it's no problem to, to run those in concert with Susan Manager. And finally, then, in this uh, control and monitoring circle, I've already talked about Nagios uh, and friends. So one of the friends is, is Izinga, which is kind of a next generation Nagios fork from a company also located in Nuremberg in Germany. Uh, Izinga, as I've said, we, we're shipping Izinga these days. The integration is pretty loosely coupled at this point to, uh, to um, say it politely, um, but we are starting to integrate that more de deeply. So we are um, planning for the next couple of months to um, mainly work on you know, the presets for a certain scenarios. So let's say when we do web server templates, uh, we would also uh, make sure that um, the probes are installed, that, that the web servers are added um, to uh, using our configuration and so on. Another project we are working on, and you can do it on your own already, um, is, is integrating into Elk stack, so Elasticsearch logs uh, stash Kibana stacks. Uh, Elk is mainly, it is started in log analysis, where you have lots of log data and you want to make sense of that data, but in general, logs are just a special case of, or monitor, let's put it that way, monitoring is just a special case of logging. So if you want, you can basically see the event stream that comes from monitoring systems as just log messages. So there is a, a pretty blurry line between what you can do uh, with ELK in terms of just analysis analyzing log data and also using it for um, some kind of monitoring. Of course, what it doesn't do out of the box is alerting. So you would get a lot of data um, in terms of trending, like um, if you want to check every couple of minutes what, what your hard disk usage is, you can then create nice uh, time-based graphs uh, with ELK. Uh, if you want to get alerts, you need to um, augment it with other technology. Uh, Splunk is um, widely used. So one of the customers that um, this year is a customer of the year, um, Tyson Foods, also a salt and Susan Manager customer. Uh, they are using Splunk a lot um, and they've built their own uh, integration with the Susa Manager uh, APIs um, to export data into Splunk and provide uh, what you could call like management pornos for, for, for their upper management where they can basically have very nice pictures for, for, for management to see, okay, that's how many machines have been patched per, per day and um, how secure are we and all those things. Uptimes, whatever you want. Yeah. Now, what are the actual options? I've talked a lot about um, the API, um, there's a very simple tool for just reports that's called Spacewalk Reports. Those are scripts that, that um, create pre-baked 
reports for you, and it's extensible to some extent. Um, then there's the Nagio Zizinga monitoring integration. There's a, a ready-to-run integration that allows you to um, display the patch status of a system, so whether machines uh, need updates, uh, whether those are critical or not, uh, in your Nagios uh, dashboard. So that's a documented plugin that, that ships with SUSE Manager. Then there's Base Command. That's a command line tool that you can install on any uh, Linux machine, basically, that talks the XML RPC API in the background, uh, but is, is much more convenient if you just want to do uh, a few things um, on the terminal console or um, just uh, in a bash script. So if you want to just create a few users, for example, space command is a great thing. Uh, if you want to do more complex things, the XML RPC API is, is, is um, the better choice. And I have a code example for that in a minute. Finally, there's SQL as an option and then, and then salt, of course. So um, spacewalk report, um, I think it has to say reports, right? Yeah, so that's a typo here. Um, you find documentation uh, about how it, it works in, in the SUSE manager documentation. And this is just a screenshot of how the Nagios integration uh, works. So in the, in the plain Nagios dashboard, uh, you, in this case, for example, you have an SSH probe and, and you have a patch probe. And then you can drill down and see how many patches um, haven't been applied yet and so on. Yeah, space command is especially um, interesting for, as I said, bash scripting or um, maintenance tasks um, that you do on the interactive uh, shell. Not so ideal for longer scripts, and the main reason is that if you have longer scripts and you want to do things like iterating over results, you can do that in bash. I mean, you can use all kinds of set AWK stuff, uh, parse your results, create temporary files and use them, and whatever. But um, in the API, it's much more easy because you are basically uh, handling, uh, let's say if you do it in Python, you basically get Python dictionaries back from the API that you could just iterate over directly in your code and, and manipulate directly. So the API is an XML RPC API that's probably not as fancy these days as a REST API, but honestly, I personally still like it better because from a user perspective, when you use it from a programming language, it just feels like remote um, message calling, a remote function calling. It's not really necessary to do any um, you don't have to know anything about how the protocol works. You don't have to do any massaging to the message. Uh, of course, REST APIs have that benefit that, that you basically don't need any tools. You could even do it with just wget and, and curl. And yeah, they, they all have their, their pros and cons. Um, again, it's well documented. The API reference uh, applies to all the, the different languages. One thing that I just uh, submitted upstream in the SALT project a uh, bit of an experimental feature, but it actually works, is integration into SALT so that you could um, use a so-called SALT runner. SALT runners are things that you run on the SALT master server uh, and, and call the SUSE Manager API from there. So you can use SALT um, configuration syntax to, let's say, um, create a list of users that, that would then would be auto-generated on a SUSE Manager, and you can set it up for many uh, SUSE Manager servers. So it has two aspects. You can use it to bootstrap a new system if you want to set up a SUSE Manager for a proof of concept or just give it a try. Um, we are planning to basically provide those files to play with um, that would allow you to um, avoid the tedious task of going to the UI and creating your users, creating your groups and everything. Just run the script and you open up SUSE Manager and it's pre-configured. But also, uh, in the longer term maintain, maintenance of, of large environments. If you have more than one server and you want to keep them all um, like sync users to those, those machines um, when you add a user and so on, you can automate all that. Yeah, um, usually I recommend using Python for that XML RPC API. 
bindings are available for XML RPC for Perl, Ruby, Java, probably quite a few other languages. Um, in Python, things look really easy, especially when you also use that Python requests module. So that's a, a simple example. Um, that would just um, use the API um, to authenticate first and then uh, create, um, a, re retrieve a list of users and print that list. Yeah, so that's, that's just a very simple example. The boilerplate code is really just a few lines and the rest is basically, uh, it's very Pythonic, so you can call those methods as if they were locally installed. It's really just going through uh, the XML RPC HTTP connection and retrieve stuff for you from the server. Yeah, then there's finally uh, the, the, the one option called SQL. I mean, we have an SQL database behind SUSE Manager, so why not just um, use SQL to um, get data out? Well, there's one recommendation for that, don't do it. Um, the main reason is that those guys, uh, uh, the engineers uh, in, in the SUSE Manager team, uh, they don't provide you any guarantee that database schemas will stay the same. I mean, if you know what you're doing, feel free to mess around with things, but we don't provide any support or any guarantee um, if you do that kind of things that, that APIs don't change. While the XML RPC API will, will um, be well defined and uh, it's versioned and you can be pretty sure that existing APIs don't break with a maintenance update or so. Now, finally, salt stack or salt. Um, this is a slide I've taken from the presentation that Pete Chadwick is going to um, repeat on Friday, where we show how you can basically build a next generation data center. So that's based on um, what we've announced um, in the keynote, um, the container as a service platform where those boxes are basically the so-called micro OSs, so those are images that you can roll out directly on, on hardware and then um, the actual applications would be provided as, as containers, uh, as Docker containers and Kubernetes does the management. Uh, in those complex scenarios and so on, uh, basically what, what we are trying to do going forward is, is, is to use SALT as the lingua franca to, to manage those kinds of architectures, starting with um, maybe managing the physical switches, um, then deploying different profiles of service. So in that case, you could probably guess that um, that part is, is going to become an OpenStack cloud and this is the storage part, which may be an uh, ASUSE Enterprise um, storage. Salt is very pluggable. So basically all the discussions we, we've we had uh, a minute ago about SUSE Manager, you could do the same with Salt. And apologies for the colors. We really have to work on our templates because the green on white and stuff is, is very, very hard to read. Um, just a few to pick. Um, first of all, what Salt calls pillars. Um, that's data that would um, either be defined in a configuration file or most, most of the time probably would come from your configuration management database. And there are all kinds of plugins. So you can uh, get um, pillar data to define aspects for a machine like um, usernames, passwords um, in pillars from SQL, from um, Cobbler, for example, so um, there are plugins for Cobbler, there, there are plugins for um, uh, LDAP for different, um, like, like ServiceNow, there's an, uh, an integration into ServiceNow, commercial one. Uh, then this is meant to say authentication sources, uh, same thing here, you can of course use external authentication sources um, like LDAP Active Directory. Then returners, in, in, in salt speak, returners are uh, facilities that would take the uh, data that comes back from a machine that has just executed a certain task, um, 
um, so-called jobs and collect the history of those jobs. And those returners, for example, could be, um, that could directly feed into an ELK stack. So Elasticsearch um, could be plugged into that directly or Grafana or just again an SQL database. Or so um, that's very pluggable. There's a nice integration into Git, again, where you use Git as um, your um, source for configuration data. It's even built in a way where you could have lots of different Git repositories that you hook into a kind of virtual file tree. So you could actually have teams maintain certain configuration templates in their own Git repositories, and then they are mirrored into your uh, configuration tree. Uh, proxy minions, that's a technology behind what we've um, done with uh, HPE OneView, and I have a separate slide on that one. Uh, proxy minions abstract away systems that don't have a Linux or, or Windows or whatever running where you could install salt itself. So they may ch just have an API. So what we did uh, for demo purposes last year in the keynote in Amsterdam or later in, at SaltConf in, in uh, Salt Lake City was uh, to use those Philips Hue lights um, and uh, access those lights through their uh, REST API through their controller uh, from Salt. But the, uh, there, there are no limits to what you can do with that as long as your endpoint has some kind of API. This could be through SSH, it could be through a command line tool that, that can be um, interfaced into Python and be just with PyExpect where you handle the return values from, from a, a command line tool. Basically anything uh, works there. Um, then of course, SALT itself has an API. Um, that's what we are using to integrate SALT into SUSE Manager. Um, we have a Python to Java API binding, there's a so-called Java Net API that we are maintaining. Um, that API um, gives you access to both the event bus, where, where you get all the data back from the clients and so on, uh, and also um, all the different, um, uh, the endpoints you, you need to um, execute tasks on the machines and all the flavors like SSH-based and, and uh, uh, Minion-based. Yeah. Then there are renderers. Um, that's something, if you're interested in renderers, I'll, I'll, I'll take, I'll show some examples as part of the Friday, uh, no, Thursday, I think, uh, the two-hour um, hands-on session again. Uh, renderers can take configuration files. So if you have configuration files that are non-standard, that are not uh, typically used in SALT. You could write your own renderer. So if you have some kind of XML format that you guys, your guys invented to describe machines, or in SUSE's case, we have three formats we could look into. We have Autoyast, we have Kiwi configuration files, both of them are XML, and then we have a machinery which uh, creates system descriptions uh, in JSON. Uh, and that's the prototype that, that, that I've done, uh, rendering those JSON files directly into SUSE Manager, uh, into salt states that you could yeah, use in SUSE Manager or outside. So what, what um, you can do with this OneView integration with HPE, um, OneView is available for the Blade Centers and also for the next generation uh, composable um, server architectures. It's an API that gives you high-level access to the whole uh, machine, lets you soft partition the machine, set up templates that you can then apply, templates that define things like the image that should uh, be installed, how many CPUs are assigned, network connections, and so on, um, which basically allows you to, uh, to um, orchestrate through the whole stack because you can set up the physical machine install the OS, install your applications, and uh, configure it all, all from one template, basically. Yeah, that one looks better if you use uh, a PowerPoint. Um, finally, um, let's just briefly talk a bit about um, Microsoft um, System Center and the integration that we have into System Center Operations Manager. 
Um, so what that slide is supposed to say is heterogeneity, heterogeneity is uh, a fact of life and mixed Windows and Linux infrastructures are too. Um, if you have such mixed environments, then uh, the integration we have with System Center is really nice. Uh, we just released uh, updates, so uh, it's now working uh, with the 2016 uh, versions starting December 2016. Um, it needs System Center and SUSE Manager installed, but it allows your admins to um, use SUSE Manager through a plugin in uh, so-called management pack in SCOM. Um, that is mainly interesting in an environment where your admins are used to um, working on the Windows machine, uh, used to um, working from the SCOM console. It replicates uh, most of the uh, functionality of the SUSE manager um, uh, user interface especially around patching and so on. Um, so that's integration that is uh, pretty interesting in, in mixed environments. Yeah, that's basically the, um, the pitch. Uh, it works for both SUSE Linux Enterprise Server and Red Hat Enterprise Linux, just like SUSE Manager does. And um, this integration is all going through the API. So there's no installation needed on the SUSE manager side. You really just install the management pack into uh, SCOM and provide it with the, the user and password credentials uh, for your SUSE manager and, and you are in business. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I think the marketing slides we can basically skip here. Uh, as I've said, there is a live demo available in uh, Microsoft Azure Cloud that we can provide. For some reason, I'm losing the connection now. Yeah, that we can provide um, on request um, to everyone who's interested. So, as I said, the demo is not going to take place this time. Um, but we have time left for, for, for more questions, either around uh, the technical options or, or if you want to know more about the, the actual customer cases, like the Apollo one or, or others that I may be able to talk about, feel free to ask. So okay. question there, so we, have, so we have that special tool now for, now we have a special tool now for a web or system center or not. <coughs> Let's say the customer has a, has a different kind of monitoring solution, patrol, uh, uh, something else, purely uh, framework, for example. Would you now use Sol to intermediate or would you pick, pick an API, you know, Tiki somehow, or let's say a, a message custom solution, or you know, what would you recommend to use for that integration? So the question was about integrating um, third-party monitoring tools like BMC Patrol or others. Um, now that we have SALT, there's no easy answer to it. I mean, it depends on what you want to do. Um, SALT is definitely an option, and we are looking into that for our own use to collect data from, from systems and then feed them into a monitoring tool. So um, I had this notion of returners on, this, on the SALT slide. Uh, one example of doing things would be to, to write a returner that would know how to create files in the format for your uh, monitoring system or how to talk to the monitoring systems API um, and use it as a returner. So basically all the feedback, you can filter it, you can only pick things that are relevant um, in your returner and, and then um, feed it into the tool. So that's one of the things that you can do. If it's more static, you basically only want to export all the machines that are in SUSE Manager into the other tools so that they show up in the UI, then probably just using the XML RPC API is still the, the, the most easy way to go. So it, it depends a bit on the on the use case. But yeah, SALT would work. Um, what SALT 
doesn't have out of the box is a database. So basically we are using the SUSE Manager database for persistence. So that's the only place where we have the, all the machines. SALT um, would try to connect to any system um, that has an, a, a public and private key exchange um, accepted. Um, so of course, SALT knows somewhat from the, 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 the keys that it accepted which machines are to be available, but everything else is live. So you can use it to query your data center in real time, collect data and then use that. But if you want to just query um, a static repository of what you have, then uh, SUSE Manager is, is, is still the way to go. But again, you can of course, what we can do is we could write a so-called external pillars so that SALT can retrieve the data for you and then you could use those pillars um, to do things with your other solution. So yeah. I mean it's all code so <laughs> to put it simply you can script everything but not all of those options would make sense. Some would be overly complicated. How is it licensed? Is it uh, uh, the external license over it or I need a separate license to integrate so for system center, yeah, there's a, a, a small extra fee for the integration. I think it's a, just a $1,000 um, um, uh, SKU um, for the integration that, that's one time for the SUSE manager server. Um, but you have to have both the system center um, server access licenses and, and the SUSE manager subscription. Yeah. So it's mostly attractive for companies who already have, you know, with the SA, uh, with this uh, server access licenses, usually they have kind of a corporate agreement with, with Microsoft where it doesn't really matter whether you add a few of the Linux servers. In that case, it's pretty interesting, yeah. Sasha, do you have a question? You don't? I'm not taking bug reports today, yeah. <laughs> so um, just to, to wrap up, um, if you haven't, if you're using SUSE Manager or planning to use SUSE Manager and you haven't looked into what the XML RPC API can do for you, give it a, uh, give it a try. Uh, for new projects, I strongly consider starting with SALT from day one. Um, documentation is improving every day. We are adding training materials. This week we've done quite a few trainings on SUSE Manager, SUSE Manager with SALT, extending SALT, and all those trainings are going to be available after the show and we want to even like refine them, um, put some of that stuff into uh, um, developer documentation for uh, end users who want to extend the framework. And finally, for that specific use case of mixed environments, um, especially when you have more Windows than Linux, um, and you already have a, a strong investment into Microsoft um, System Center, um, there's the management pack. And remember, you can get live demos if you want. There are more sessions on SALT, like tomorrow, again, final advertisement, uh, the two-hour session um, on hacking SALT for fun and profit, where we are using Raspberry Pis, and last, um, yesterday was great fun. So in the last exercise, we're going to try to um, work with those pies. Yeah, so much for now. Enjoy the evening at the science, uh, at the, the um, um, aerospace and, what is it called? Space and Aerospace uh, Museum, which is a great experience. Went there a couple of years ago. And maybe see you in another session. Thanks.